Welcome aboard Alex's Animal Ark. My name is Alex and I will be your guide to all the amazing animals that live on our planet. Today we will be learning about the Tria in honor of my grandpa Al Carlson who recently passed away. So what exactly is a Nutria? To start with, they're a semi-aquatic rodent of unusual size that looks like a smaller beaver with a rounded tail. They can reach body lengths of up to two feet with a tail length of one to one and a half feet and reach weights between 9 and 20 pounds. They can live up to six and a half years in the wild. They're covered in coarse fur that is light to dark brown in color with soft, dense gray underfur. They have a white patch on their muzzle along with white whiskers. Their teeth large and orange just like a beaver's. Their back is arched which is one way to tell it apart from beavers and muskrats. Nutrias have five toes on each foot and their back feet are webbed for swimming. Their tail is long and rounded. They're often mistaken for muskrats or beavers, but they're easy to tell apart with certain characteristics. Nutrias are almost five times bigger than muskrats. They have rounded tails instead of flat tails like beavers. They have an arch back, they have white whiskers, and are usually found in warmer climates, but they can be found in the coastal states. So where can you find nutrias? Nutrias are usually found near permanent sources of water, such as rivers, streams, ponds, lakes, and wetlands. They will also live in brackish coastal waters. They also like really warm climates. They're native to the marshes and coastal lakes of Bolivia and Brazil. Nutria farms were created to increase fur production since they almost went extinct in their native range. The first attempt at a nutria farm was in France in the 1880s, but this was not successful. They were introduced to the U.S. in 1899 in the state of California for harvesting of their fur, but this was unsuccessful at first. Eventually, they were able to get the nutria farms up and running, and especially in 1930 in Louisiana. Soon there were nutria farms all over the United States, as well as, as, well as Europe and Asia. Unfortunately, the fur trade collapsed in the 1930s and 40s, so many nutrias were released. They began to thrive, survive, and multiply in these non-native places and became an invasive species. Currently, they are found in coastal areas in the southern United States. Nutrias are very destructive to native swamps by eating lots of plants and eating the whole plant, including the roots, which makes it hard for the marshes to survive. They also carry tuberculosis and several parasites, such as liver flukes, and a tapeworm which is harmful to humans and animals. Luckily, people are trying to prevent this problem from getting worse by hunting, trapping, or preventing the nutrias from building burrows. So what are some nutria behaviors? Nutria are diurnal and forage during the day. They are very voracious eaters and feed year-round. They will consume about 25% of their weight in a day. They are primarily herbivores but will also eat some small invertebrates. They mostly eat wetland plants, but they will also eat any plants they can get their paws on, including crops. Unfortunately, they eat the whole plant, including the roots, which prevents them from growing back. To get to the roots of the plants, the nutria will dig, dig through the soil, which contributes to erosion. Speaking of erosion, Nutria live in burrows near bodies of water and often connect several with a tunnel system, which often cut through levees as well as flotation supports for docks and also under roads and other structures. Nutria do have predators in both their native and non-native ranges. These include humans, cottonmouths, alligators, garfish, bald eagles, other birds of prey, turtles, and several other mammalian predators. They typically live in groups of two to 13 individuals. This often includes related adult females, their offspring, and one adult male. 
Males typically have a range of 14 acres, and females range about 6 acres. Nutria breed year-round and can have up to 3 litters of 2 to 13 babies uh, each, which rapidly expands the population. They reach sexual maturity by 4 to 6 months and can give birth to their first litter at 8 months. The females can also breed 1 to 2 days after giving birth. Speaking of that, gestation lasts around 4 months, and the babies are born fully furred and with their eyes open, so they could survive on their own as young as 5 days old. However, they usually nurse for about 7 to 8 weeks, and then go off on their own at about 10 weeks. And now it's time for some Nutria fun facts. They are known as the Swamp Beaver or Koipu, which comes from its scientific name, Myocaster Koipus. The tapeworm they carry causes a rash known as Nutria itch. My grandpa sold Nutrias to farmers as an investment when he was young. He also served in the Air Force as a photographer during the end of the Korean War, along with working as a dictaphone repairman, being a director in the YMCA in the Chicago area, and eventually running his own business. The most important role he took on was being a great husband, father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. He accomplished a lot in 92 years of life, and I enjoyed spending time with him over the years. He was a great man, and my whole family will miss him dearly. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed it and want to hear more, feel free to subscribe to Alex's Animal Arc on YouTube, or subscribe on Spotify, Deezer, Stitcher, TuneIn, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Castro, CastBox, PodFriend, and iHeartRadio. If there is an animal you would like to hear me cover, please email your name and the animal you want to hear about to awesomeanimals21 at gmail. That's the numbers 2-1, and I will add it to the list. Thank you for coming on this animal adventure. I will see you all again for the next voyage.